Hi everyone, Chris Yoke, Yoke Pen Company. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bullock flange um, for an oblique. And the bullock flange basically allows you to to use either a standard flange that's adjustable with a screw or a quill quill. So the first thing we're going to need to do is a few tools. My nib flange pliers, the flat and round. Um, you'll need a scratch awl. You'll need a pair of tin snips, um, a couple strips of brass, half inch by two inch long. These are, this is a number two screw and nut, number two machine screw, solder and a soldering iron, and then a drill to drill the hole for the uh, screw. Um, so how we're going to start, I'm going to clear my area here a little. And going to make a standard nib flange. So you just take the flap, uh, the strip of brass, bend it over in half, and you've seen this in my other video. Um, and we're going to make just the standard arc. And this time you would normally in my other video I showed you would put the nib in it to give it some form for the nib you're going to use but because this is going to be a universal type situation you want to leave that as closed as possible so it's able to close down for small nibs like a uh, Burl's EF66 or what have you okay so we have first section done the standard flange and then the next section what um, I've never told anyone yet because there's not that many people that do it. These uh, pliers I had made are a little bit different. Up here you see this is the standard bale making pliers you buy somewhere. Mine are actually a little bit different. The smaller side is a tad bit smaller. It makes a better nib flange and it also serves a second purpose in making a bullock flange. Excuse all the noise, I'm in my shop, so there's going to be machine noisery going on. So, I had this made specifically sized so that way when you're making a cruel quill bullock flange, it's pre sized for it. You don't have to have anything else. So, to make the crow quill section, what you're going to do is put it around the small section like this, and then you're going to grab it and you're going to twist at the same time you squeeze because you want the bottom section to be flat so twist and a squeeze and as you can see it's flat on one side and raised the other and that allows it when it's on the pin to sit just like that okay so the next thing we're going to do and what I did was I just turned a little piece of scrap wood to use as a, uh, a, a model for putting the flange in it and we're going to want to trim this flange to fit just like you would if you were actually inserting it into the, the uh, attaching it to the pin holder and I know this is going to be too long but too long is better than too short just going to get an idea of my angle I'm setting it at okay I can tell the angle is a little bit too steep and I need to trim off some so should be closer probably have to make one more cut yep one more cut it should be good now with the upper section of the flange and that's pretty good all right so now that we have that don't need the nib anymore what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe a line on this brass and what I, the, well, that's going to give me where I cut the flange you'll see what I talk what I'm talking about shortly so I'm going to scribe a line along the profile of the pin. And if you take that out, you'll see that's a section. This section of it I'm going to be cutting off. Okay, so I take the crow quill section, lay it on top, and I'm going to trim it off the exact same angle. And then I'm going to take the crow quill section, place it in the pin where it's going to be setting, and I'm going to scribe the back end of it and you can see here I got a little gap I'm not doing this per, for precision like I normally would a flange but I'm scribing the back side of it because I'm going to trim that off 
and you'll see that in a moment. Now the next thing I need to do is drill a hole for the screw to go in and you're going to want that hole centered in this section of the flange. So the way I do it is I lay them down together Oops. I place a scratch all where I want the hole give it a quick tap because it's brass it marks very easily okay so I'm going to go drill the hole which is 3 30 seconds of an inch or whatever fits your screw you're using and I'm going to do that on the drill press so I'm going to be right back um, the way I do it is I hold them together right there in this section because this section of the flange is going to be cut off and wasted so if I scratch it up with pliers no big deal um, it keeps this section clean. So let me drill a hole. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my hole drilled through both sections. And see, they it's not precisely lined up like I normally would because I'm kind of rushing things for this video. Um, the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to trim off the excess. I want to trim off this section because what's going to happen is on each section, only half of the flange is actually going to be attached to the pin. So this part's going to be attached to the pin on the top side and the reverse on the bottom. So I scribe that and I want to cut it a little bit short of that line by just like a millimeter or so and the reason is I'll show you in a second I trim up and I take all the sharp edges off of these a little bit normally I would take a file sometimes and file them off really nice but I'm just wanting the principle here um, the reason you want a little bit shorter is so that when it is mounted in the pin you can see there's a gap that will allow someone that likes to cant their nib flanges up to do it without it hitting the wood so trim it just a little bit short and then on the, the other one I'm gonna cut off the excess sorry I'm out of frame here and again cut it just a little bit short and then again I'll take off this very sharp point so people stab their fingers okay and then before I attach everything, what I do is I put the screw in and I kind of assemble it together and I put it in the pin and make sure we, all the gaps are good and we've got clearance. Um, grab my screwdriver. And I give it a just a dry fit just to make sure it's going to work. So what I'm doing is I'm placing it in there and I'm making sure that there's a small gap there. When I flip it over, there should be a gap here. That side's always a little bit bigger. Um, and now that I know that that's right, I've made a bullock flange. Um, it's now adjustable, but the only bummer is the screw, this nut's going to turn anytime you turn the screw. So I solder mine in place, which is helpful. Not necessary, but makes life a lot easier. Um, you want to do this, I use about I have my soldering iron set on 750 degrees. Um, it's a fine point. And I'm just going to heat up the nut. And then the heat will flow down to the brass flange. And I solder it in place. And there it is. So now that nut will stay still and you're just loosening the screw and of course it's very hot so I'm burning my fingers um, now when you go to loosen the screw on it it's just the screw that turns nut stays in place and allows you to adjust it and then once that's done I would take it place it in the pin and attach it and I tell you what I'll show you how I attach to Use a Dremel, number 65 drill bit, 
and I use uh, 20 thousandths brass rod. And what I do is I'm going to drill through the back side, underside. I'm just going to go into the wood a little bit through the brass and into the wood a little bit like so. So let's drill the hole. The hole's drilled through. And then I place the pin in there. I'm not going to epoxy it into place right now, but I take flush cutters and I cut a little bit shorter. And the reason is, is when I cut it shorter like that, when I insert it, I'm not going to insert it into the hole, but when I insert it in the hole, it allows it to fall below the hole, and then I put a little dab of epoxy on top, and it keeps it in there. Then if you want to finish it off, and it's better if you do, fill this little gap right here in your slot with epoxy, and fill the top gap, because it allows moisture to penetrate the wood, especially when you're dipping it in the ink and water. Um, you want to seal these up because the ingrain of the wood will absorb water. So it's just take some minute to hold it in place so I can show you how it works now. Okay, so now when you want any nib, you just loosen this screw and the flange is normally secured. And this will open up and you just slide it in there. I need to loosen a little bit more, but you get the idea. And then right there, you have a place for a crow quill and then actually you have another area where you can do a little trick and slip nibs in not this nib because it's too big smaller nibs like a spencerian one and such and there you have it a bullock flange albeit a little bit rough for this video but you get the idea that's the principles behind making it thank you